Okay. Hmm. Films presents true stories narrated by Jim Harris. I now begin with a true story. Throughout my life, I think I've lived a very interesting life. I have been to places that most people have never gone and don't want to go. For four and a half years, I worked as an underground coal miner. I've been in as far as four miles in, 15 to 40 stories deep, and I worked what was called low coal. It was a 42 inch mine, meaning that from the floor to the ceiling was only three and a half feet tall. So once you got inside, you crawled on your hands and knees. Again, most people don't even want to go in, but that's how we mine coal in low coal conditions. The other place that I've been to, which to me is very interesting, is prison. <laughs> I've been in and out of prison for the last 15 years, not as an inmate, but I went in to preach and to sing to the inmates. And I've been to different prisons, been to three different ones. I first started in Mansfield, Ohio Maximum and Minimum Security. And then I went to Youngstown, Ohio, which is the Supermax prison, Ohio State Penitentiary. And then I went down to Southeastern Correctional Institution, and that's in Lancaster, Ohio. I had met their chaplain, Michael Henson, a good brother of mine. He's, he's a pastor down in Columbus, Ohio, in the hood. I've been there on two different occasions to preach and to sing for him and his congregation. When I was in uh, Ohio State Penitentiary in, uh, in Youngstown, Ohio, that's where I met Chaplain Michael Henson. And while there, Supermax Prison, the reason they're in that prison is because they did something bad in other prisons. And so when I go to preach to them up there, they literally put them in cages when I preach to them. I can only preach to six at a time. They're in cages, maybe about three and a half feet square. When they bring them into these, these cages, we're right down where the cells are at. They march them in. Again, they did something bad in prison, reason they're there. It's according to their behavior. They either come in leg irons and handcuffs, and they're handcuffed behind their back, carrying their Bibles, at least some of them. If they're on better behavior, maybe just handcuff. If they're on good behavior, uh, there'll be no cuffs whatsoever. They're in lockdown. That means they're, they're in lockdown in their cells most of the day. They get out for one hour to shower and to exercise. And as they get some good behavior, they may be out for two or three more hours in addition to that. While there, I was at death row. Death Row was very, very interesting. These guys knew their Bible. See, their goal is to become in prison to have life without parole. And I know that may sound strange, but they're on death row, and they want off death row, so most of them are on good behavior for that time, but they do know their Bible. While on death row, a subject come up about a guy named Bimbo. Bimbo had been on death row and executed, and he had, when he got his death date, and let me explain that, when you're on death row, they're in average probably 20 years more or less, but after all the appeals are done, they are then given their death date or their date of execution, and when they get that date, that changes everything. It not only changes the the attitude of the one who gets the date, but it changes the whole atmosphere on death row because they know in a process of time, either sooner or later, hopefully later, they will also get their death date or their date of execution. And when that happened, that begins to change everything. So Bimbo got his death date and begin to consider his life, the past, the, the present, and the future, and realize his life and mistakes. And so he ended up, what he did, 
he wrote a letter to the other inmates. And so after he was executed, there was a man named Dan Wilson who was also on death row who knew Bimbo. And so he seen his life. He loved him, he respected him. And so when he got his death date, he also wrote a letter to the other inmates in the other prisons. And this is when the conversation come up. And I asked my dear brother, Chaplain Henson, could it be possible that I could get a letter of that copy of that letter, which he gave to me, which I'm going to read to you today. Now, we all know that we're going to die, but we don't know when. But when we come to a place realizing we are dying or going to die, it does and should change everything of how we think, act, and live. So basically, here's the letter from Dan Wilson. Dear friend, I am writing this letter to pass on the most important lesson I've learned in my life. I'm only sorry that I had to come to death row to learn it. And even after spending years on death row, I didn't learn this lesson until I got my execution date and really started to look at my life, to reflect on the choices that I've made throughout my life and how I wanted to spend my eternal life. I've never really been a religious or spiritual person. I've always believed in God, but I never turned to God. I guess that I had come to a death date before I finally wised up and accepted that I have nothing without Jesus in my life. I am writing this letter to you because I hope that you will wise up before it's too late. Life is very short and too much time is wasted on things that means nothing. We hold petty beasts with each other. We talk about people behind their backs. We focus and waste our lives on everything. But what we should be is that to be focused on Jesus. Guys go to Bible study to hear Jesus' message and then return to the pods to play the same games that we've all played throughout our lives. These games got us nowhere. We lived our lives by standards that makes no sense. What we all should have been doing is living our lives for Jesus because if we had, we would know that we should have been living in love with three standards, faith, hope, and love, with love being the most important, faith in Jesus, hope for a better life, and love for everyone. Jesus is a God of love. If you have love, no one can separate you from Jesus. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels or demons, neither present nor the future, nor any power, neither height or depths, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's in Romans 8, 38, 39. Dan continues. The life we live every day on death row is hard. We separate are separated from our families and friends. We've lost our freedoms to do the simplest things for ourselves. We face hardships from every angle and every person. We are under a constant threat of execution and death. Everything becomes a struggle. This type of life makes it easy for us to slip into patterns of hate, bitterness, selfishness, where we degrade ourselves and others around us. We spend our days worrying and thinking about things we don't mean, that don't mean anything. I've got more TV stations. I want to do this or that. He said that or he did this. None of that stuff means anything in the big picture of things. As I sit in this cell reading my Bible, I realize one thing. In everything we do, we need to love. Love Jesus. Love our families and friends and love one another. Love is very powerful. If we had love in our lives on the streets, we wouldn't be here today. What does love mean? Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than oneself. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel with when others grovel. 
takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with everything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. If you're reading this letter, I'm gone. But the love I have for you guys is still there. I'm copying Bimbo's letter and writing like he did for good reason. I learned a lot from watching Bimbo go out. I had a lot of love and respect for Bimbo. I may not have lived my life with faith, hope, and love, but I've chosen to wise up. And I hope you will too. I hope that you will see that Jesus is the only way. I hope that one day each of you will pick up your Bibles, read it, and realize how great life could have been if we had chosen to live with love with Jesus. I wish you all the best. I hope you win your cases and get to live a long and fulfilled life filled with love. I hope and pray that the pains and struggles you face every day will get better and go away. I hope and pray that you will, you will turn to Jesus for all your needs. Jesus is love, and love never dies. Remember John 3.16. It doesn't matter what the state of Ohio does. If you look for him, Jesus will be there for you. Take care, my friends, with love and respect. Dan Wilson. And Dan Wilson was executed in 2009. You know, we all know that we're going to die, but if you knew you had a date of death coming your way, how would it change you? See, we've got to give everything to God. People believe in God, but most people only turn to God in times of, of trials and tragedy. Then they turn away again. But one lawyer asked Jesus, which is the greatest commandment of all? And Jesus says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And with this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thou self. As we struggle through life and we live in sin, we cannot get out because we are bound by sin by the power of Satan. But God can deliver us. Because Jesus says in Matthew the 11th chapter, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your souls. It also says in Romans the 10th chapter, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How about you, my friend? How's things between you and God? Because the fact of the matter is you may believe in God, but are you truly serving him and giving him everything of your life? May God bless you.